In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered full of joy and gratitude because we are here again celebrating, commemorating the great day of the inauguration of salvation in our human history. It was the birth of Jesus and today it is his birthday. Today is a remembrance of the kind of the love and the kindness and generosity of our God has promised us the self-salvation and the Savior has been born to us. Indeed, the light has been born to light the darkness of our world. Speaking of light and darkness, we are indeed in the darkness of this pandemic. It's been many months. We thought that we will be able to gather together in the church to celebrate with our families Christmas and unfortunately the resurgence and the coming of a new variant called Omicron is again making us our lives difficult and the re-implementations uh, re of a lot of lockdowns and restrictions. But in spirit, my dear friends, it will never stop us to celebrate with the gratitude that we have for this God for the day that he has born to us. It's a day that we celebrate it, even with the small family members in spirit, we can still proclaim the good news of joy and peace to one another and to pray. Because right now in this Christmas day and night, my reflection will be focusing on kindness. Kindness is a manifestation of love. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ask also ourselves for the times, for the many months and days leading to this Christmas day, what have we given to one another? What have we served the Lord? Therefore, let us ask the Father's forgiveness for the times that we have failed to be kind to one another, our failure to show this great love of God to one another. Let us acknowledge now our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sending a contrary of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are received right hands of God to see for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together. Glory to God in the highest and on earth is the people of goodwill. We pray. you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory Lord God Heavenly King O God Almighty Father Lord Jesus Christ only begotten Son Lord God Lamb of God Son of the Father you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the Father have mercy on us for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen let us pray O god who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light grant we pray that we who have known the mysteries of his life on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, see, your salvation comes. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. A light will shine on us this day. The Lord is born for us. A light will shine on us this day. The Lord is born for us. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thickness and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A light will shine on us this day. The Lord is born for us. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. A light will shine on us this day. The Lord is born for us. Light dawns for the righteous, and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. A light, light will shine on us this day. The Lord is born for us. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any words of righteousness that he had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. living in the fields, 
keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news for great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who in favor. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem to see this thing that this has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, um, I remember this uh, story about an old lady who handed her that card to the teller and she said, I would like to withdraw $10. The teller told her, for withdrawals less than $100, please use the ATM. The old lady wanted to know why. The teller returned her bank card and irritably told her, these are the rules. Please, madame, live if there is no further matter. There is a line of customers behind you. The old lady remained silent for a few seconds and handed her card back to the teller and said, please help me withdraw all the money that I have. The teller was astonished when she checked the account balance. She nodded her head leaned down and respectfully told her, you have $300,000 in your account, but the account doesn't have that much cash currently. Could you make an appointment and come back again tomorrow? The old lady then asked how much she could withdraw immediately. The teller told her that any amount will do up to $3,000. Well, please let me have $3,000 now. The teller kindly handed $3,000 very friendly, courteously, and a smile to her. The old lady put $10 in her purse and asked the teller to deposit $2,990 back into her account. See, I hope she is as wiser. She is as wiser as the three kings, right? Or the three wise men. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, the moral of the story is, well, there are a few things we can learn from the story, actually. And one of the lessons that we can learn is about kindness. I hope the tellers that are serving you from your respective bank, uh, banks are doing their job well. They are courteous and always ready and kindly to help you, I believe, because the bank that serves our parish, our tellers there are, are so nice people. My dear brothers and sisters, this year, um, this Christmas, I wish to focus my reflection on the virtue of kindness. During this moment that we have witnessed this world, whether we talk about health, whether, whether about the welfare of humanity, including this pandemic, whether we talk about politics, there's so much, my dear friends, that we need to do to invite and actually to, to, to share. And the, the thing that we need to share to, with, with one another is kindness, which is actually somehow is missing. 
especially in the talk, in the conversation or chat about politics, people are so divided these days. Even a little kindness, there's not any more kindness when the politics is talked about. When you try to look from a new difference from the scriptures and from our previous experiences, which you have gone through before, we do realize that the kindness of God has been consistent. His kindness were never failing. It's all comforting and overflowing, especially those who have met tragedy, those who have made or already lost loved ones, those who have gone through a lot of problems in their lives. They have survived it. They were able to surpass it. My dear friends, it is because God's grace continues, His kindness continues to pour in our human lives every day. During the Advent Sundays, if you remember the messages that we have heard from the scripture, we have heard the prophets and the New Covenant or New Testament writers like St. Paul. We have heard him again in our second reading that through his letter to the people of Titus, his friend. All messengers of God, all of them were talking about or telling us stories of this God revealing his promise of redemption to his people, assuring them that the day would come that the Messiah, the Savior, would be born in our human history. Indeed, it did come in the person of Christ Jesus, whose birth we are all Christians, believers in Christianity, we are all celebrating him today with joy. Because of God's kindness to humanity, because of his eternal love for all of us, all of us created in his image and likeness, God has never abandoned us. He reveals himself in the person of Jesus so that he could, we could all experience concrete, concretely his presence, his blessings, his healing, his forgiveness, and nourishment, and above all, my dear friends, we can experience salvation. The angel reminded Mary and Joseph that the Son of Man will be called Emmanuel because it bears the meaning that God indeed is with us. So today, my dear friends, we are celebrating that despite all these lockdowns and restrictions and only very few can come to the church. All of you who are here, few of you are just representing the entire community or the entire people in our parish. And yet, my dear friends, as Jesus said, when two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in your midst. So this, my dear friends, are assurance of Jesus, whether you are just few people praying together in spirit, we are also praying for one another, for the greater number of people in our world. Today, we come again in spirit. Unfortunately, not in a physical way that we can celebrate communally Jesus' birthday because of our community COVID situation, we commemorate still the inauguration of God's redemptions in our means, in our prayers for one another, those who are with us here in the church and those who are actually at home right now celebrating us in spirit, this liturgy, the celebration of Jesus' birth. Indeed, today is a great day of rejoicing because God has been blessing us so much. He is blessing our families. He is blessing our community and other communities. He is blessing the world. He is blessing the most in need. He has never abandoned those people also who have no voice in this world. God also is with them. In our readings, my dear friends, especially the gospel, the revelation of his kindness and of goodness is are actually manifested among the ordinary people. In the gospel, it is represented by actually the couple themselves, Mary and Joseph, ordinary people. And the shepherds are actually voiceless, faceless in, in ancient times in the community. Who were the shepherds? They were just like farmers. They were just ordinary people. And yet, you, we, we have heard from the readings today, God through the angels revealed the good news to these ordinary people, revealing them, giving them hope and joy that the Messiah is now born for everyone. The Messiah is not only for the rich, 
It is not only for those privileged in society. It is meant for every human being. And that is why in our gospel today, from the gospel of you, the mention of the shepherds and the ordinary couple, Joseph and Mary, is a revelation, is a representation, my dear friends, of us, ordinary people here in this world. God reveals to us. Emmanuel is indeed with us. God is with us. That, my dear friends, is a reflection, a revelation that indeed God truly loves and each and every one of us. From the Gospel of John, we will be hearing that video of us on Christmas Day. The writer proclaims this beautiful message. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The key word there, my dear friends, is gave. Giving. Isn't it, my dear friends, that Christmas is the best season for giving? In fact, the Jackson 5, you still remember that song in the 70s? Most of you were born in the 70s and 80s. We are all familiar with that song. They were singing, Give Love on Christmas Day. It is just the highlight of giving on Christmas Day. But we know, my dear friends, as believers in Christ and followers, every day is Christmas Day. Because every day should be a moment of giving, of sharing, of being with others. That's actually our goal as disciples, to be giver to others. Where we get that message, where we get that principle, it is from the Lord himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So we have been hearing this, my dear friends, from Christmas song. It is a wonderful reminder, actually, of the essence of Christmas. Because Christmas should always be, and every day of our Christian life, it should always be about giving. Now, we have to think about our role. We have to actually examine ourselves this Christmas. Have we thought of something wonderful to give and to share this Christmas? My dear friends, giving actually comes from our sense of kindness. Giving comes from our true sense of loving. Giving comes from the very gift of the Lord in each one of us. Kindness is a very concrete expression of love. The love that Christ has shown to each one of us. His great commandment has been, love one another as I have loved you. Let our celebration, therefore, this Christmas, though limited because of our COVID cases, be filled, all of you here, all of you at home right now, those probably in the road, those our loved ones who are working or away, who cannot come home, those people that are actually isolating, remember this, our hearts are filled with the graces of God. He is always with us. There are a few important reminders to us, my dear friends, that we can do during this pandemic, in the season of Christmas, to translate the atmosphere of our celebration to be more meaningful. The things that we can do possibly are all this in, in view of the principle of kindness. The first one is this, show kindness to oneself. We cannot give kindness just, just like forgiveness, just love, or just, just like love. We cannot give it if we don't have it. It is the same with kindness. Show kindness to oneself. During this pandemic, my dear friends, we have been hearing counselors reminding us to slow down. I know there's a lot of anxiety and fears again, even among us here in Eskasani. We are scared about this Omicron, how it is transmitted. Last year, we don't have much cases. We were living in, at peace here in the community, and suddenly our cases here is a reflection of cases in Nova Scotia and around the country. But we still have to live our lives. We should not live in anxiety and fears. And counselors and the Lord is reminding all of us to slow down. Practice mindfulness. Practice self-compassion in the midst of tiredness, in the midst of wearing out of patience, of frustration, fatigue to this ongoing COVID crisis. Let's just slow down. Let's not fear. The message from the gospel is very clear. Do not fear. To the shepherds, the angel said, do not fear. Our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us during this crisis, do not fear. 
entrust everything to the Lord. Entrust everything to our health care workers. Entrust everything that we do our part to help one another, including my dear friends. If you are not vaccinated, I'm addressing this to people who might be listening to me. If you are not vaccinated, this is a life and death situation now. Don't hesitate. Do the right thing. The, the least that you can do in this world, be kind to yourself. Have yourself vaccinated. Because if you are doing that, you are also showing and doing your kindness to other people. It could be your grandchild, it could be your nephew or nieces, it could be your elderly mom or elderly dad who is vulnerable and needing protection. If you are unvaccinated, you will get sick also. So what, what can we do? We will be at loss with this situation. So show kindness to oneself. The second thing that we can practice, maybe this is the thing that we can do this Christmas, be kind to others. I've already mentioned when we talk of politics, people are so divided. They're not even showing the least of kindness to one another anymore. Yes, brothers and sisters, it is our Christian obligation. Be kind to one another and to others. Think that you are not alone in this COVID fatigue. Right now, we are frustrated that we cannot return to normal. We cannot even celebrate with our friends and extended family members Christmas celebration. We have a lot of anxiety. And yet at the same time, my dear friends, we need to do the right thing. Let's just be kind to one another. Be considerate with one another. And the third one, my dear friends, that we could probably invite this Christmas that we can do is count your blessings. Don't count or focus so much on the bad days. When you focus on the negativities on the, of the bad days, you will lose track. You will lose of the good things that you have received from the Lord. Count the blessing, not the bad days. There's so much blessing to count on during this whole 2021. We have received the life that we, we have been blessed with each day with our life. Our families have been blessed. We, would, we have been kept safe even. Our community is still strong. Our province is still moving on. And we are helping one another during the crisis last year. And again today, we are going to be helping one another. So I believe we have to count for all the blessings. And above all, my dear friends, the fourth one is, I think, of the crisis or problems of other people. Let us not so over focus on what our problems are. Commonly, when we are self absorbed with our own problems, we forget that there are no people around the world who have more problems and tribulations and crises in their lives. Think about this time, my dear friends. We are still able to, to live in this abode with eating system. When we, went, we go back to our home, we can sleep well. Try to think, my dear friends, at this moment, the many millions of refugees from the African countries in the Middle East. Remember Syria, Iraq? There are many refugees there. They don't have homes. They are just living in tents. So if you have some problem right now, probably loneliness because other family members cannot join you during this Christmas, maybe this Christmas will be a little bit gloomy for you. Think about the more crisis and problems that other people, their survival, they are fleeing the cruelties of their nations and their communities. They have more problems than you, than your loneliness right now. So think about the bigger things, the bigger picture. There are more people who are suffering because of their sickness. Some are actually suffering because of COVID. Some are still in ICU. Very, at this very moment, some are dying because of COVID. So think about them, not just your own problem. My dear friends, that's actually kindness. That's Christmas when you think of other people. So it is my prayer, my dear brothers and sisters, and my hope that all of you will be safe, whether at your home, your families, and with you here. Let us celebrate this Christmas in a meaningful way. Remember that God is with us. Let's think also of one another. Be kind. As the song would go, the latest song, kill it with kindness. Kill it with kindness. Do what is right.
So may the may this Christmas may give them be very meaningful because we care for one another. Let us now all rise, brothers and sisters, and profess our faith. We shall be using the long uh, version of our profession of faith, the Nicene Creed. If you have your with you, the copy in your business, let's do it together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and women and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. And for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now offer our needs before the Lord. God dispelled the darkness of this world when Christ, the true light, dawned on us. Let us pray to God with unlimited confidence on this joyful night. For all who believe in Christ, that the light of hope and love may shine through all the things say and do. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of the world, that Christ, the Prince of Peace, may direct their minds and hearts to work for justice and peace on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For families. That scattered families may be re reunited. That those in distress may experience relief. And those physically separated may be comforted that their love for one another is what that matters most. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Those who, for every reason, are not looking for work for Christmas. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. For all gathered here and for our loved ones. That we may welcome Christ into our lives with the faith and love of Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick and those recovered. For Perla Azor, Father Anglin's mother. Richard Pullett, Sister Victoria, and for others who are in COVID-related isolation and recovery, that they may receive God's bless, grace, healing, and return to good health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the dead who absent himself this Christmas. For Joey Joe, Noel Julian, Leonard and Josephine Paul. Blair Francis, Shishi Gould, Clement Paul, Shane Marshall, and Pauline Francis, that Christ may lead them into the joyful vision of his glorious presence. Also for the fatal victims of COVID-19 pandemic and others, praying for their salvation and for the prayers and comfort 
for all who mourn their loss. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. Now in silence, with your friends, pray also for our own personal or family. God's blessings for all of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Father, fill our hearts with love for the coming of your Son. Give us the grace to overcome our fears and anxieties, especially during this COVID-19 resurgence. And keep us joyful in your presence and the presence of one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for the goodness that is spread to offer you, its earth has given, given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through goodness we have this wine to offer you. Through the divine of work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, can we ask you just in my humble and contrite heart? The Lord, was away my sins and cleanse me from my Pray with your friends that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his creation. May the oblation of this day's peace be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things that is invisible. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we all acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice which may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving his thanks, he said a blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith and bring this God. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving, this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and Saint Catherine, and all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all in the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Wayne Joseph our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, with confidence to our loving Father, we pray now in the words Jesus has taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of the power and the glory of your Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now preach our sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
So that we assume this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, O oh, grant us, grant us peace. But dear friends, it is Jesus who is born for us, our salvation. He is the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. Happy are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not the words that you should enter the fire, but I will say the word that my soul shall be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the great feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with Him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I'd just like to take this opportunity again to greet each one of you, particularly those in, at home right now, whether at home in the Philippines with my families, Maligayang Pasko, Magayang Pasko sa Indogabos. That's our greeting in our own language. Merry Christmas to each and every one, to those who are here. Well, a few people representing our community, all the parishioners, including those in other communities. It is my prayer that you will receive God's blessing and the joy in your heart, uh, even during this darkness of our pandemic. God is always with us. May the joy in your heart be filled to other people. Share it, especially kindness to one another. Uh, Deacon Tom, thanks so much for your help today, our readers. Um, uh, thank you so much for helping us. I'd just like to let our parishioners also know that uh, the families of the late Sherry's are all here. I invited them just to be acknowledged of the help they have been doing in the tradition of decorating our church. Our Christmas uh, um, sanctuary is always beautiful because of the work of this. A round of applause to Elda and to the rest of the family, the Paul's family. Thank you. All the Sherry's uh, children who have to help out and other volunteers. Thank you so much for your generosity. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son, Jesus, has driven darkness from the world, and by the glorious birth has illumined this most holy night and day, drive from you the darkness of eyes from your heart, and illumine it with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth, be announced to shepherd by the angel. Fill your minds with the gladness he gives to you and your family, and make you messengers of his good news. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you sharers in the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of our loving and almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Calm down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in peace and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, those at home and online who are watching. Merry Christmas to you and your loved one. God bless us all. Our final hymn, we know this song, but we let the choir sing for us, okay? Oh, uh -huh. 